came to love you. We came to worship you. Thank you. Have your way this morning. Yes, Lord. Have your way in everything that will be done in this place. Your will be done. Not our will, but yes, thy kingdom come. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we could come to your house, Lord. We come with thanksgiving. We come with praise, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. You are such a good God. Things that you have done for us. You are a good God. You are a remarkable God. We are a God that we can rely on. We are full of thanksgiving. Today, Lord, I was reminded of the ten lepers that came to Jesus. They were sick. He healed them. Hallelujah. He healed them. Yes. And they went their way. But there's only one leper that came back to say thank you to Jesus. And by coming back, the word of God says that he was made whole. Hallelujah. We are thankful, Lord. We are thankful. You are a good God. We ought to say thank you. We ought to praise you. And by thanking you, Lord, we are opening the room for more. We are thankful this morning, Lord. Not just for good things, even for the bad things. You know, the word says, give thanks. In all things, we ought to give thanks. In all things, we ought to give thanks. We are grateful, of God, this morning. We are thankful. We raise our hands, Lord, in all of you. We just want to say thank you. We just want to say how much we appreciate, how much we honor you, even for the tiniest thing, Lord, this morning. We are saying thank you to you. Thank you, Lord. You sent your son, Jesus Christ. We don't need to trivialize what he did for us. It is so big. It is a big issue. We know that the world is trivializing that. But we came this morning to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. We thank you for the ancient path that we can walk in today, Lord. We thank you for enlightenment. Thank you, Lord. Pastor said last week that people perish. The word says my people perish because they lack knowledge. And Lord, you say you will reject us if we reject your instruction. We came this morning, Lord, to get your instruction, to listen to what you have to say. Yes. Even in our homes, Lord, we want to take time, Lord, to sit down with the weight and go through the weight and find the keys, Lord. Perhaps we've been standing before a door, Lord, and we didn't have the keys. Perhaps because we are not reading your word the way that we should be reading it. And the frequency of our reading, the way perhaps it's not enough, Lord. Father God, we are thankful. We are thankful that you will give us time to read your word, to find the keys. We are thankful for the kingdom. The kingdom is full of mysteries. The kingdom has got keys. Keys that we need to find to open the doors, Lord. Doors that have been shut, Lord. You are a God who opens doors that have been shut. We thank you, Lord, that doors will open this morning. Doors that have refused to open, Lord. They are going to open this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your weight. All of that is found in your weight. When we sit down and interact with your weight, that is when success will come. We don't have to pursue success. Success will come because we have sought your kingdom. That is what your word says. That we should look for the kingdom first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things that we need shall be added unto us. We are thankful, O oh God, for the system of advantage. You gave us the right to be called your children. We are your children. We can use, you have given us it in the name of Jesus. That we can use it. The name that is called authority. The name that is God, that is above all other names. All evil spirits and demons bow when we call upon this name, Father God. We are so thankful that we can use it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Father God. 
this morning. For there is no other God, Lord. You've given us weapons, powerful weapons, that we can use to fight, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are at an advantage, Lord. When the whole world lies in darkness, Lord, sing a wonder the Bible because there will be light for us, Lord. Just like the children of Israel, when they were in light, when the whole of Egypt was in darkness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this light. Your light fills this room this morning. Your light lightens our path this morning. You are the light of this world. When light comes, darkness is forced to go. Darkness shifts. Light and darkness cannot prohibit. We are so thankful, Lord oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you will move on our behalf this morning. It should be your agenda, not ours. Take over, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Move in this place this morning. Touch our pastor as we be sharing the way with us, Lord. Let things be done your way, Lord, not our way. End the worship this morning, Lord. It should be to glorify you, to magnify your name, to give you your rightful place, Lord. Take your place this morning. Take your place in our hearts. Take your place, Father God, in our homes. Take your place in our finances. Take your place in our jobs. Take your place, Lord. It should be all about you, Lord. It's all about you. We are coming back to the place of worship. We are coming back to you, Lord, to sing praises to you. You are good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take over, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus.
where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. And God is that Spirit. Thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Fill this place. Fill this place. Occupy our hearts. Occupy our thoughts. Reba Baba Shane Rabana. Rika Laba Baba Yanda Rabati. Rika Lebe Lebe Shete. Rabba Baba Yanda Rabba Shete. Rika Lebe
God that He can fellowship with His people again. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today I will be ministering the offering. Uh, we are familiar with the saying that goes, uh, faith without works is dead. Amen. 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 The same with our giving. So the title of my message today is Application Brings Transformation. Amen. Amen. When we apply what the Word of God teaches us in our finances, in our jobs, in our lives, it changes something. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We experience transformation. We see this all over the Bible of the great men and women of God, that they apply what God has spoken to them. They act on what God has spoken to them about. Amen? Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, we can see many successful people around the world, it's 80% of their success comes from their behavior and 20% comes from their knowledge. Amen? So the scripture is saying that 80% of how we react to what God is saying comes from our behavior. Amen? How we apply. It's very good for us to read books and to attend seminars and to hear messages on tithing and offering, but never putting it to practice will never change anything in our lives. Amen? So we have to apply the things that we have heard. Sometimes it's better to hear less and apply more than hearing more and applying nothing. So as Christians, we ought to apply the word of God. And as Christians, how do we apply? We tithe. Amen? Now if we don't tithe, we end up tipping. Tipping and tithing is two different things. You usually tip after you've eaten the meal based on how the waiter has treated you. Amen? With tithing, you give to God before you get the meal because He has already provided the meal and you're trusting in Him to bless the rest. Amen? With tipping, you are always giving whatever you have left over. It may be a 10 dan or 1 dan. It's whatever you have left over. There's no intention behind it. You just give what's in your pocket. But with tithing, you always give a specific percentage and you keep it constant. Amen? Just as he is a consistent God. With tipping, you give to a waiter. With tithing, you give to a creator. Amen? So let us not treat our God as a waiter, brothers and sisters. But let, him, let us treat him as our creator. Amen? And let us remember today, brothers and sisters, that God didn't treat you as a waiter. He gave you His best. He gave us His Son. Amen? Amen. And I just want to remind you today, brothers and sisters, when we plant a garden or when we plant anything, we can be planting vegetables, we can be planting fruits, we believe in the future, we believe that there's going to be a harvest. Amen? So for us to plant is for us to believe that we are going to reap something someday. Amen? Amen? So brothers and sisters, the first thing is believing. Or have we, been, have we been gotten weary of believing? I think today we need to check ourselves. Are we believing and are we expecting still on God? Or have we gotten weary of what He can actually do in our lives? Amen? Are we just existing or are we believing and trusting Him for a change? Secondly, if we believe, we ought to apply. Amen? Amen? Brothers and sisters, this is the basics of giving and receiving as a Christian. After a few months, once we've planted seeds, once we've planted a, a vegetable or a fruit seed, we know certainly that it's going to sprout. Amen? Amen. So the same with our tithes and our offerings. We should be sure that we are about to receive from God. Amen? If we are not sure that we, we are ought to receive from God, it means that we doubt His abilities. Amen. So let us just bow our heads and pray today, brothers and sisters. Father God, we pray for our hearts today that you may help us to have perfect faith, that we may believe that you have already provided. May your desire today, O oh Father God, be our desire, Father God. May we never cease to believe in your name. May we never cease to praise your name, O oh Father God. May you help us, O oh God, to believe.
a need that you've already provided for us. Amen. Father God, we don't have to struggle, oh Father God. We don't have to strive, oh Father God. For we know, oh God, that you are our creator and you will provide for us, oh Father God. Lord God, we thank you because you have already provided, oh God. We can step forth, oh Father God. We can continue in this race, oh Father God. For we know that you will be with us, oh Father God. We know, oh Father God, whatever you've given us into our hands, oh Father God, we know that you will help us to manage it, oh Father God. Lord God, today we just thank you, Almighty God, that you give us an opportunity every single day, oh Father God, to give to you. We, to give to you, whether it's tithes, oh Father God, whether it's offering, whether it's praise, oh Father God. We thank you for the opportunity, Almighty God, that you give to us, oh Father God. Help us to see this, oh Father God. Lord God, we just bring, oh God, we bring everything into your hands, oh God, that you may bless it, oh Father God. It is you, oh Father God, who gives us the ability, oh God, to make wealth, oh Father God. It is only you, oh Father God. Lord God, may you search our hearts today, oh Father God. Lord God, may our hearts be open, may our ears be open, oh Father God, that we may hear your word. May we not only hear your word, but you may help us, oh Father God, in applying your word, oh Father God. Father God, may you help us, oh Father God, as difficult as it may seem, oh God, may you help us to take a step of faith, oh Father God, and to give to you, oh Father God. Father God, open our hearts that we may see the needs of your kingdom, oh Father God, for it is our home just as it is your home, oh Father God. May you open our hearts, so oh mighty God. May you make us cheerful givers today, oh Father God. Lord God, help us, so oh God, open our hearts, so oh God, open our minds, so oh mighty God, that it may be easy for us to give to you, oh Father God, for you are our creator and you will lack nothing, oh Father God. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in church this morning. I say it's good to be in church this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, welcome to everybody. And anybody visiting us for the first time, would you please uh, just stand? We'd just like to welcome you this morning. Amen. If you're visiting us this morning, please stand. We'd just like to welcome you in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Trust, we believe that you'll be blessed this morning. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. Praise God. God is good all the time. God is good. Amen. amen. Praise God. Well, this morning, family, um, I think before I start, uh, Sister Dolly has got a testimony she'd like to share. So I'd like to maybe just call her to come and share before we go. Amen. Praise God. Come on, thank God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. I greet you once again, brothers and sisters. I thought first I was going to call me at the end. Hallelujah. Okay, I will just sum up. It's a long testimony, but I'm just summing up. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, most of you uh, are not aware that uh, I'm no longer in the um, teaching department, the education department. Um, this year, God blessed me with a business in town. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And uh, I am a very shy person. Perhaps I, I've been, I, I haven't given the testimony because of that, above any other thing. I knew that I had to come to the front to say it, you know, Amen. that God has blessed me with that place. Um, when uh, in the early stages of it, because it, I think it started around about February, March, I told Pastor and Pastor Sharon about it. They came over to the place 
to anoint the place and I was very thankful for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I trust that where God is, there will be action. Hallelujah. Amen. So I asked them, they came, the whole family came uh, to anoint the place. Hallelujah. Um, perhaps it is the enemy that did not want me to come forward because I've been saying I will come when, when I see that there's action in that place. Mm -hmm. I will come when, you know, the business is, is flowing to glorify God. But in the early hours of this morning, that word that I prayed about 10 lepers being healed, you know, they, they got, they received their healing. And as they went, they were healed. As they left, they received healing, okay? And then one of them went back to Jesus to say thank you. Amen. That's th saying thank you. And when, when he gave, he said thank you to Jesus, he was made whole. Amen. And we are told that the others, the, perhaps the others were not made whole simply because they did not uh, say thank you, go back to Jesus to say thank you. So I think, yeah, I, I, I kind of was motivated. Trust the Holy Spirit. Say, you have to go today. You must do it today. Amen. Go there. Amen. Share. Hallelujah. So I'm here to share that, Amen. brothers and sisters, that God has blessed me. Though things are not, you know, going the way that perhaps I, I, I'm hoping and, and trusting God for, perhaps it was that. Perhaps that's where the key is. That you know what? You haven't gone there to say thank you. Yeah. Go there. Yeah. Say thank you. You don't have to wait. Yeah. You know, Thanksgiving creates. Yeah. You create. You don't start thanking God because you see. You can thank God in advance. Oh, you start God. thanking God in advance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And yeah. that is the nutshell, brothers yeah. and sisters. That is all. I thank God for that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.
about language, how to speak, how a kingdom person speaks. And, um, you know, and this morning the Lord prompted you to share on as a man thinketh. Amen. There's a mentality that we have, a kingdom mentality. And it's not the mentality of the world. Many of us, we, you know, we, we've been to school. I shared with you last week. You go to school, you go to university, you go to all these places and you get educated. I'm not against education, but the thing is, whatever you learn, you've got to come to church so that we can unlearn you of that. We've got to unlearn you from carrying all, you know, when they say don't carry all your eggs in one basket. Well, in the kingdom of God, there's only one basket, and that is the hand of God. Hallelujah. And in the kingdom of God, you're not a basket case. Amen. Say that with me. I'm not a basket case. Not a you are a God case. You are a God case. You're not a basket case. You're a God case. You serve a God who loves you. A God who knows everything about you. Every detail about you. That's the kingdom mentality. So we've got to un, you know, unschool you. Where they tell you about not counting your chickens before they hatch. Yeah, we tell you to call those things that be not as though they were. That is the kingdom. That is the kingdom way. The kingdom way by far supersedes the world system. And I want to open up with a statement and the statement I want to make is about your thoughts are so important because your thoughts will either cause you to live on top of the world or be buried in it. See that? Your thoughts will either cause you to live on top of the world or be buried in it. And once you're buried, your potential is hidden. And you are bound. So your thoughts are very, very important. And I want you to remember this and make a note of it somewhere. Is that you did not choose God, God chose you. You know, you find many times when you speak to people, yes, it sounds right, it sounds, but it's not right. When people say, um, you know, uh, you know what, I found the Lord. You found the Lord? Was He lost that you found Him? The thing is, He was not lost, we were lost. He found us. You see that? He found us. We were lost in sin. We were dead because of sin. We were lost, but He found us. That's why Jesus says, he came to seek and to find that which was lost. So he sought us. He found us. And he, come and talk to me somebody. He chose us. Hallelujah. He chose us. Now, you may have a lot of things in your background. You know, when you look at the Consider your background, your upbringing, your life. You could have been in jail. You could have been a murderer. You could have, you know, you could have been married seven times or 20 times for that matter. You, you understand? There, there's so many things you could have done, but nonetheless, all that, all those things did not change God's mind about you. You see that all that didn't change God's mind about you. God is mindful about you. Come and talk to me. He's mindful about you. So much so that he has visited you. He's visited you. The psalmist says, what is man that you are so mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. You see that? All that you have done did not change God's mind about you because God knows your potential. Tell somebody you have potential. Yes. God has put something on the inside of you. He's put something on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And that's what Christianity is about. That's what being a believer is about. It's not about living your life based on what's outside. You live your life your, your, your life based on what is inside. 
What is inside needs to come out. Talk to me, somebody. When God breathed the breath of life into man's nostril, he, he breathed man's destiny. He breathed man's purpose. He breathed everything into you. It's all inside of you. Now, you've got to come to a place, and, and you've come to that place in Christ now, where you can exhale what God has inhaled. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I don't care who your parents are. I don't care who your parents were. Talk to me, somebody. You couldn't have come into this world without God. You with me? You couldn't have come into this world without God. Because it was God who gave you life. And because God gave you life, God has a plan and God has a purpose for you. You are special in the eyes of God. You've been chosen, brothers and sisters in Christ, for such a time as this. Say that, I've been chosen of God for such a time as this. Go with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 13. Let's just look at something here quickly. Hallelujah. You see, you've got to change your mentality about God. You've got to understand that God loves you. You've got to understand that God cares about you. You've got to understand that God is mindful of you. Proverbs 13. Can you read verse 32 on the top of your voice? Proverbs 30, verse 32. One, two, go. Read it one more time. He says, if you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have thought evil, put your hand where? Put your hand where? The Passion Translation says this, it says, if you've acted foolishly by drawing attention to yourself, or if you've thought about saying something stupid, you better shut your mouth. The King James says, put your hand, lay your hand over your mouth. You see, we've been, we've been, you know, we, we've been taught about the power of words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. But it doesn't start with your words. It doesn't start with your actions. It starts with your thoughts. Everything begins with your thought. Have you ever considered when someone is, you know, in a court of law and they want to establish, you know, the scales of justice as to whether or not the person is guilty or not and they base the findings and if the person is found to be guilty then you hear the word premeditated. Premeditated. Why? Because before it could become an action, it was first meditated upon. It first began with a thought. Everything in your life did not start with your action. It didn't happen as a result of your action. It, it, it began as a result of your thinking. Your thinking is where it starts. You see, it's the same with if you want to get healed. With healing. Healing starts with your thoughts. With your mind. In Romans 12, Paul speaks to the church in Rome. And he says, be not conformed to this world. In other words, do not be conditioned to the world. But be transformed. Be transformed. Be changed. Be renewed. Be re-educated.
educated by the renewing of your mind. Your thoughts need to be renewed. You need to think in a new light. It begins with your thoughts. Your thoughts are powerful. That's why Proverbs 30 verse 32, we've just read now, if you've thought evil, put your hand over your mouth because what you thought you are going to speak. Your thoughts are going to become words and then your words are going to become actions and then your actions are going to become habits and then your habits are going to become character. So at the end of it all, your true character begins with a thought. Who you are, who you're going to be, who you can be, it begins with your thoughts. Look at that woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she thought to herself. She thought to herself. She said to herself, if only I can touch. So it began with a thought. Because once you think it, with your mind you can see it. And then you can conceive it. And then you give birth to it. So everything in your life, it begins, it begins with the thought. The thought is where it starts. Your thought, thinking is where it starts. Hallelujah. And Satan knows this. He knows this. He knows this. The enemy knows this. He knows that once he can cripple your mind, he can cripple you. The real battle it's not what you're facing or not what you're fighting. The real battle is the mind. It's a mind over matter principle. If, listen, Goliath of Gad stood there with the Philistine army, an entire army of Israelites stood on the other side and they saw Goliath. And Goliath was cursing them. Understand this. Goliath was cursing them. He was cursing them. And understand this. Because of that, they were so afraid of him. Because they looked at what they could see. And then they were afraid. Fear grabbed a hold of them. Fear kept a whole, a whole army in bondage. They were immobile. They couldn't move. But then a young man, a 17-year-old, by the name of David. David comes. David has a different mentality. David has a different mentality. As much as Goliath was busy cursing Israel, David had the mentality that, listen, if you're cursing this nation, you're cursing their God. And if you're cursing their God, you define their God. But David had a mentality that his God was bigger than Goliath and bigger than the Philistines. David had a different mentality. That's why, before the battle even started, David won the battle in his mind. That's why when Saul, King Saul even, you know, called him and he said to him, um, you know, put on my garments. Put on my garments. And they put it on to David. And as David was clothed with Saul's armor, he looked at it and he, man, he said, man, this is going to slow me down. His strength was not coming from what he wore. His strength was coming from who is on the inside. And then he looked and he said, the lion, the bear, who are you? The same God who delivered me from the lion, the same God who delivered me from the bear, is the same God who delivered me from you. And then he says to Goliath, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. 
the God of Israel, whom you have defied. I've come to give notice to you. You understand? Because David even said, take off these garments, they're going to slow me down. Because God is going to do a quick thing here. You understand? It, God will give you your breakthrough not based on what you think. You're always thinking, oh, it's going to happen this way. Let me tell you, that is a matchbox mentality. Do not put God in a box. God is bigger than the box that you've placed in me. He's not going to do it. Listen, God does for you. When God does something, He doesn't do it according to your plan. He does it exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or imagine. That's how God does things. Hallelujah. God is bigger than your mind. And Satan is after your thoughts because he knows if he can get your thoughts, he can get you. And he can disable you. Now understand this. God also wants your thoughts. Have you not heard in the book of Isaiah, God says to the prophet, he says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so far, so far are my thoughts greater than yours, are my ways greater than yours. You see, why would God say that your, your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways? It's because God has got a higher way of thinking than you think, and God has a higher way of working than you think. You understand? You see, too. To the world, it, it, is, it, it is foolish. It seems foolish when you do things in a different way, when you say things differently, when you behave differently, when you think differently. The world does not understand it. The world, hence the world will think that you are crazy, you are off your mind. But it, it's okay. The Bible says you are a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Praise God. You become what you think on continuously because eventually it's going to come out of your mouth. What you think on, you become that. And eventually it's going to come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. So you've got to watch your thoughts. Amen. Watch your thoughts. Because listen, everything that's around you, everything that's around you is after your thoughts. Put on the TV. Turn on the television. As soon as you turn on the television, the thing is after your thoughts. Because now you start seeing stuff. You start hearing stuff. And all of a sudden thoughts start to take place. But you've got to, you've got to, listen, as soon as you think something, just ask yourself, how does it measure, how does it line up with the Word of God? Hallelujah. I mean, that's how, when, when Satan came to Eve in the garden, when he came, he was after her thoughts, because he knew if he could get her to think, because he even says, did God really say? Did God really say? He comes with suggestion. He comes with opinion. He got Eve into thinking that God was holding back something from her. He got Eve into thinking that she was not good enough. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, you have everything on the inside of you. You are not short of anything. When God created you, everything you need is on the inside of you. You with me? You were made on God's workbench and God doesn't make mistakes. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. So when a wrong thought comes into your mind, you got to take authority over those thoughts. Take authority over those suggestions. Take authority over it. How do you take authority? You take authority and you say, 
in the name of Jesus, I come up against this thought. And I, pre and I plead the blood of Jesus upon the portal to my mind. You plead the blood of Jesus, you understand? On the door to your mind. So you are giving no access to bad thinking. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Satan got Eve to think that, you know, God was holding back something from her, that she was incomplete, that she was inferior, that she was not enough. And that was a lie. Because everything that God had created, it was good. Hallelujah. So you're missing nothing. Tell somebody you're missing nothing. Say you're missing nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. When you were made, God had you on his workbench. Everything that you're going to do and be, God already created. It's placed on the inside of you. Your potential is on the inside of you. And as you, as you obey him, as you obey God, you're going to work out what he has placed in it's all to, you see, obedience leads to blessing. That's why he says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Obedience brings you to a place where you're walking in fellowship with God. Walking in communion with God. Hallelujah. Do, you know, I'm going to say something now, and I just pray to God that you will be able to receive it is that poor people are not poor because they have no money. They are not poor because they have a low paying job. No, they are poor because of their thinking. God is not, listen, he, listen, you do not serve salary jaira, money jaira. You serve Jehovah jaira, the Lord who provides. You see, a poor mentality is thinking from payslip to payslip. God wants you out of that thinking. Oh, Jesus, help somebody. Help somebody. If you're thinking poor, you're going to be poor. If you're thinking sickness, you're going to be sick. If you're thinking, come and talk to me, weakness, you're going to be weak. And the enemy uses things around you. And there are many people, many people, many people, they have a, a dream from God, a vision from God, a gift from God that they need to work out. But because of the way things are happening around them, the things that are around them, thoughts are things, remember, thoughts are things. The things around them begin to dictate to them what they can and what they can't do. You understand that? Remember the prophet in the valley of bones. God asked him, can these bones live? Can these bones live? God asks you today, you could be that valley of bones. Can life come again? Can restoration come? Can peace come? Can prosperity come? Can good come? See that? So they look at everything around them and they hear what's happening around them and they listen to the news and they listen to everything, read everything, lend their eyes and ears to everything. And then all of a sudden those things begin to create thoughts and then they begin to think that, ah, oh, I cannot do it, I can't make it. That's the enemy working. The Apostle Paul in the book of Corinthians, he speaks to the church in Corinth. He says, the God of this world has blinded them. The people of the world are blind. They cannot see. But you can see. Come and talk to me. That's why when the Syrian army came up against the man of God, and he was there with his servant, and the servant was saying, but the man of God, what are we going to do? He said, no, oh, they that be with us are far more than those that be before us here. 
Then he prayed to God, O oh Lord God, open the eyes of my servant that he may see. And when the servant's eyes were opened, he saw, he saw the mountains. He just saw they were completely surrounded with angels from heaven and talking to somebody. So you may look at your situation and look at your circumstance and you may say, but you know what, what I see, I really, I really can't see my way through. Listen, it starts with your thinking. Get your thinking right. God is bigger than what you see. God is bigger than what you're facing. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Amen. When we look at, first, go with me, 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles, chapter number 4. You all know the story of Jesus. Amen. Watch this. Watch from verse 10. Let's go from verse 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain so God granted him what he requested we serve a God who answers prayer say this with me I serve a prayer answering God now here's the question did Jabez pray for money? Did Jabez pray for money? Did Jabez pray for a job? You see, Jabez did not ask God for money. He did not ask God for material things. He asked God to enlarge his territory. In other words, to give him the ability to receive how God sees him. He prayed that God would give him the ability to see how God sees him. Many of us need to pray that prayer. That we can see how God sees us. Because God, listen, you may see yourself as poor. You may see yourself as broke. You may see yourself as weak. You may see yourself as nothing. But that is because of the enemy. He's got you bound. Come on, talk to me. You may say, I come from a poor neighborhood. Do you know the, the greatest football player the greatest football player in the world. If you were to interview him, you'd find out he never ever owned as a child. He never owned soccer boots. He played barefoot. They were too poor to afford a pair of soccer boots. It's the truth. So, you know, quit blaming your community, your society, your family. You know, people can put the blame on everybody and everything except themselves. You see, that, that football player, he saw himself playing on the grandest of football pitches. It began with a thought. He saw himself out of his community. He saw himself out of his poverty. And he became that. How do you see yourself this morning? Make that your prayer. Lord God, give me the ability to see how you see me. Because listen, when you have the ability to see how God sees you, you see beyond your circumstances. You see yourself bigger than your circumstances. You see yourself bigger than your challenges. That's why David could come to the forefront of the battleground. And when, they saw, when he saw Goliath, 
Everybody was telling her, listen, just go and look after the sheep because that's what the enemy does. He wants you there looking after the sheep. But now it's time for you to take your place. Hallelujah. Come and talk to me. Praise God, somebody. You see, the world has taught you and I have taught us wrong. That's why I say, when you turn on the TV automatically, you know, put on your cell phone. You just put on Google, anything. Anything. It kind of, suggestions are there. Thoughts are there. Why? Because the world tries to teach you that, listen, expensive houses, expensive cars, expensive clothing is more valuable than you. No! You hear people say, clothing makes the man. No. Clothing does not make you. Expensive house does not make you. It's not more valuable than you are more valuable than all those things. Amen. If you can get to a place where you understand that I can I can wear whatever clothes, it doesn't matter where I buy it from. It doesn't matter whether I bought it off the street, whether I bought it at pep stores, whether I bought it, it doesn't matter where I bought it, whether I bought it at a boutique or not, or whether it was made at home with an old garment, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's something that was second-hand that was given to me. Clothes don't make me. I make the clothes look good. You see, when someone says, oh, you're looking so beautiful, you're looking so handsome, you're looking so nice. They say, oh, it's a new thing. No, no, no. I make the clothes look good. You understand? No, I make the clothes look good. Come on, give God praise. Yes. you drive. It doesn't matter. It could be a Tata. Whether it's a Tata, whether it's a Rolls or Bentley, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As soon as you get into that car, you make that car look good. Oh, that's why it's loud. You make it look good. When you walk into a house, you make a good good. I mean, come on, somebody. Your mindset. Have you ever been to, a, to the mall and you walk into a store and there's absolutely nobody in the shop? The store's quiet. But as you're walking around and you're looking and you look after two minutes being in the store, the store starts filling up. Have you ever thought to say, hey, this store was ugly before I came in here. Oh, Jesus, come and talk to me, stop body. Hey, hey, hallelujah. It's about time we changed our thinking. It's about time we changed our thinking. Hallelujah. The store was ugly until I got there. When I got there, man, it looked so good, people started coming in. People started filling up. Come and talk to me, somebody. Many people in your workplace may be telling you, oh, this is not a nice place to work in. Oh, this, this, this. You must say, hey, listen, I'm here, so this is a good place. I bring good into this place. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah, I bring good to this place. Amen. Since you're there, you make the place more valuable. You add value to it. Look at Laban. Laban's house was, Laban's house was nothing. It was nothing. Laban... You, you understand, he, Laban was just about living from paycheck to paycheck until Jacob came there. Your potential. Oh, I would to God and you pray to God for you to open your eyes and to see yourself the way he sees you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, expensive clothing and all these expensive things, they're not more valuable than you. Listen, when, listen, when you read the Bible, the Bible tells you when you get to heaven, the streets are paved with gold. Amen. Come on, talk to me. In other words, you, you understand, the Bible says you're going to walk on streets paved with gold. Hallelujah. The Bible says you're going to have a mansion. The Bible says you're going to walk through gates made of pearls. Now that's where you come from. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is trying, you see, when, when God describes heaven to you, he's describing to you what you need to bring to this earth. Talk to 
show me somebody what you need to bring to this earth. That's why when he spoke to man, when the first man, Adam, he said, go forth and replenish the earth. Fill the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus. God says, I've got work for you to do. Hallelujah. And you need the right mentality to do it. Amen. So get your thinking right, because when your thinking is right, you'll get your speaking right, and then you'll find that, listen, what is the job of your spirit? What is the job of your spirit? Listen, man, the real you is a spirit. You're a spirit being. You're not a human being. Yes, you're a human because of, you know, you have that human nature. You have the flesh. But the real you, the real you is not the body. The real you is not the person you see in the mirror. The real you is the spirit that dwells in this tent. That's the real you. The spirit that dwells within this tent. Hallelujah. That's the real you. And what is the job of your spirit? The job of your spirit is to think and speak. Your spirit man, that's his job, to think and to speak. Because whatever you feed your spirit with, that becomes his thoughts. And those will become his words. The book of Proverbs says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I'll share with you, man is spirit. So as a spirit thinketh, so is he. As your spirit thinks, so are you. So your spirit has a job to think and to speak. Whatever you feed your spirit, whatever information you give to your spirit, are going to become your thoughts and they're going to become your words. Jesus said in John 6 verse 63, He says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Amen. God made you royalty. God made you royalty. You must understand, spirit always controls the natural. Whatever's happening in your natural is as a result of what's happening in the spirit. The natural and the spirit, they run parallel like that. So whatever is happening here, is going to happen here. So if you can get your thinking right, if you can settle it in the spirit, get your spirit right. Get your spirit right. God is spirit. Those that worship Him, worship Him in spirit. You understand? When your spirit is right with God, now you're living with God. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ. So you fall above the natural. So the natural now is no longer dictating to you to bring you down. But you're living above the world system. And you control it and you change it. When you look at Jesus, the life of Jesus, Jesus did not live based on the world system. You need to understand that you were never created to live on the world system. Look at Philippians. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Let's get our thinking right. Tell your neighbor, get your thinking right. Get your thinking right. Yeah, your thinking right. Start with your thinking. Satan has no power over the believer. He has no power over the believer. You see? Because when Jesus came, Jesus said, All power is given to me, both in heaven and on earth. Now I'm going to delegate you to do it. Now you go. You're standing here in his place. 
he needs to talk to me somebody. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8, Paul writes, he says, finally, brethren, whatever things are, whatever things are, whatever things are, true, whatever things are, noble, whatever things are, just, whatever things are, pure, whatever things are, lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think upon these things. See? He's telling you, think on the truth. Whatever is true. Amen. Think on whatsoever things are true. Amen. The book of Hebrews Chapter 2, verse 14, we find Jesus, he took, on, he took upon himself the same nature. He partook of our nature. We are children of, come on, talk to me. Amen. As we partake of flesh and blood, he likewise took on the same. He took on the same, that through death he might destroy him. That had what? had the power of death. That is the devil. The devil had that power. And Jesus, able to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subjected to bondage. There's no bondage for a child of God. Satan cannot keep you bound. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus gave you the power. Jesus gave you the authority. Now Jesus says to you, go. Now here's my, here's my thing. You are the church. You are the church. Not this building. This building, this is just a sanctuary. You and I, we are the church. Amen. Hallelujah. The church is so powerful. It's so powerful. That's why God says, resist the devil. Resist the devil. Hallelujah. Resist the devil and he will do what? He'll do what? He will do what? I can't hear you. Resist him, he will do what? Flee. If you resist the devil, he will flee. He has to flee. Praise God, he has to flee. Satan has to flee. My question is, who said resist him and he'll flee? Who said it? God said it. God said it. Now next time, Satan comes with a suggestion like he did to Eve. And he tries to get you thinking that you're not good enough, you're not cut out for it, you'll never make it. You tell him, in the name of Jesus, God has said, if I resist you, you flee. How do you resist him? With the word of God. What do you do? You start taking the word and you start meditating on the word. When a thought comes to drive out that thought, you get the thoughts of God. Where's the thoughts of God? In the word of God. So you go and look for a word. And you meditate on the word. Now you're renewing your thoughts. Now you're thinking what God thinks. Now you're thinking like God. And when you start thinking like God, you'll start speaking like God. And you'll start behaving like God. Talk to me, somebody. In other words, you will resist sickness. You will resist Poverty, you will resist temptation. You will resist the temptation to say something wrong. Amen. Because God says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And you can't, here's the, here's the important thing. You cannot resist the devil successfully if you are being held in unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness, you'll never be able to resist the devil. Because the devil has got you bound. Jesus. Can somebody who's bound set somebody who's bound free? Let me give an example. Okay. Put your hands up. Please. 
if he's bound and I'm bound, can I set him free? I can't set him free. You can do what you want. You can do what you want. If Satan, the, listen, unforgiveness, unforgiveness is a portal where you give the enemy right over your life. And you can, you can do, you can say all you want to be free, you can do what you want. If you are bound, you'll never bind, you'll never set somebody who's bound free. But when you're free, when you're free, I'm able to go to him and set him free. You see that? So, thank you, sir. So, you've got to let go. Many times you hear people, ah, forgive, but I won't forget. Once bitten, twice shy. The Bible says you'll forgive 70 times 7. And don't start adding, say 70 times 7, 490. Okay, 489, 488, 487, or 70 times. But forgiveness must be perfect. Perfect forgiveness. In other words, there's no remembrance of it. It doesn't exist anymore. It's the same, um, you know, you hear people say this thing, um, you know, you must forgive yourself. Excuse me? Forgive yourself. You ask God for forgiveness. The Bible says, if you forgive others their trespasses, so will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. It always starts with others, never with yourself. Forgiveness always starts with others, never with yourself. Talk to me, somebody. It always starts with others. The Bible says, if we confess our sin, He's just and faithful to forgive us of all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So, if you've been forgiven of God and the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all unrighteousness, why must you still forgive yourself? Because you have died. You died. You died to the transgression. So if you died to the transgression, why do you still? It doesn't exist. It is no longer I who live. It's no longer you who live. It's Christ who lives. It's Christ now. You see the thing about forgiving yourself? It's, there's no way in scripture. It's something that some psychologists use. You use on some people. They thought it sounds good enough. Forgive yourself. There's no way in scripture. The Bible says forgive others. No in the scripture does it say forgive yourself. It says forgive others. Forgive others their trespasses. You understand? So you have to let go of all unforgiveness in order for you to resist the devil. Because you can never resist if you hold on to unforgiveness. And how, listen, talk to me somebody. It just won't work. Because what happens with unforgiveness, you become neutralized. Because now the door is open to anything and everything from the enemy. Unforgiveness. Because then you find you'll be quick to anger. Quick. Someone says something wrong, you respond quickly. Get angry quickly. No. You must be slow to anger. How you respond? The response is everything. Amen. Talk to me. Jesus says you know them by their fruits. Watch them when they get angry. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we're supposed to live far above the world system of operating. You've got to live so far above it that it becomes laughable. It becomes like, if someone says something that, you know, would normally offend you, you laugh at it. <laughs> you laugh at it. You make a joke of it. Come and talk to me. 
Because you've been delivered from that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm going to close with this one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Renew your mind. Tell your neighbor, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Amen. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You've got something on the inside of you that you can begin to speak and you speak the words and all of a sudden your words start creating for you. You got that? Your words start creating for you. Oh, Jesus. Your words start creating for you. Your words. Your words start creating for you. When God created in the beginning, in Genesis, God, it began with his mind, God saw it. God spoke it. And then God saw it. He thought it. He spoke it. He saw it. He thought it. He spoke it. And he saw it. Nowhere does it say that God, you know, saw the ground, went to the ground, and he spoke and said, let the earth bring forth grass, trees, and plants, bearing fruit with its seed in it. And then it says that God went and he started creating from the ground the trees and the plants. Does it say that? God created from the ground. And when God created the fish in the seas, in the oceans, it doesn't say that God then took a dive, a scuba dive. And then he began to, un underneath the sea, begin to create the fish. No. It says, and God said. And God saw. 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 And God said. And God saw that it was good. Jesus in Matthew's Gospel says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. When you got good on the inside of you, you start bringing forth good. And what is the good? The words that you speak will be good words.
Vincent, you can have it before or after or even during. Hallelujah. And this means, this means, you'll never die if you have an overdose. You will live. Oh Jesus, somebody. You will never die of an overdose of this medicine. You will live. You will live. I say you will live. You will live. Your tough time will not live. You see, the more of this medicine you get, when you go more for this word, when you get, do you understand? Go more for this word. When you, when, you, when you begin to do that, when you begin to eat the word, and you begin to make the word a part of you, a part of your DNA and who you are, when you start doing that, when you start doing that, you start bearing the tough times. That's how you bury the tough times in your life. Tough times don't last. Take the word of God and you keep on feeding yourself with it. Eventually you'll begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Eventually, it doesn't matter. You may come before a sea, you'll see the sea open. You may come into a desert land, you'll see the Kentucky falling. Oh, Jesus. You'll see the manna, you'll see the coil. You'll see things that normal people don't see. Because this word will give you faith. It will give you faith to look beyond your circumstances. This word will cause you to see your tomorrow today and see it brighter than today. So go get you some Hallelujah. Praise God. And the amazing thing is with this medicine, there's no business hours. It's not like a, you know, when you go to the chemist, it's only from eight to one. Come after one and see if they'll help you. They'll tell you sorry. It doesn't matter how sick you are. They'll tell you we can't help you. Closed. But you can go here any day, any time, anywhere. take this medicine and you can start putting it into into your life putting it to work and you'll see your life changed I want to challenge you this morning church I want to challenge you this morning can I do that can I do that the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but Jesus has come to give you life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. God's word says that he will increase you more and more. You and your children. God's word says it will be well with your children. God's word says it will be well with you. This is my challenge to you, friends. This is my challenge to you, family. For the next 30 days. For the next 30 days. I want us as a church, Father, I would like us as a church, I'd like to invite you to partake in this for the next 30 days. We are going to go on a thought and a word fast. You see, many times people tell you, oh, we're having a three-day fast, a 21-day fast, we're going on a fast. You talk about natural food. I'm just challenging you this morning. For the next 30 days, today is the 19th of September. On the 20th of October, I want to ask you to write to me. Write to me. Either email. SMS, WhatsApp, doesn't matter, but write to me. I guarantee you're going to give me a testimony. Because you're going on a thought and a word fast. How does this work? 
everything I think, I'm going to see how it lines up with the word. If it doesn't line up with the word, I'm going to reject it in Jesus' name. And I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus. You're not going to think sickness. You're not going to think poverty. You're not going to think weakness. You're not going to think unemployment. You're not going to think those things. You're not even going to speak it. You're going to start speaking what God's word says. You may be sitting with nothing in your house, nothing in the cupboards, nothing in your bank account. You say, Lord, your word says, wealth and riches will be in my home. That's in the word of God. That's in the word of God. I don't care what your body is feeling like. You say, no. By his stripes I was healed. I am the healed of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I, I know. Me. Hey, I'm brave on this thing. I'm going to accept this challenge. I'm not just challenging you. I'm challenging myself too. I'm also included in this thing. We're going to go on a thought and word fast. And in 30 days time, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we'll call up a testimony line and you'll hear, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done because I've just renewed my thoughts. What I'm challenging you to do is to do what Sister Alicia just shared this morning. Application of the word. We can't just talk the word and not apply it. Now we're going to apply it. You see, I've taught you something on thoughts. I've taught you about thinking. I've taught you about getting your mind right. I've taught you about speaking. I think there's many sermons that I've, that I've preached on words, the power of words, the power of thoughts. But this morning I want to challenge us, church. Let's start thinking right, let's start speaking right. So from today, we're going on that fast. Who's in You know when we were growing up? When we were growing up, we always said, I dare you. And then if someone wanted to stir the pot, they say, no, I double dare you. So I'm stirring the pot. I'm saying, I double dare you. I'm in. I'm in. Because I, I know God is going to do something. I know God is going to do it. God won't say something if He's not going to do something. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you worship. We thank you that you are so mindful of us, O oh Lord God. Thank you that you haven't forgotten us, Lord. You never forget. You never leave us, you never forsake us. Thank you that you make good on every promise. Thank you that you are God who honors his word. We thank you this morning, O oh God, for your precious word. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, your son. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have had, Lord God, to meet together in your presence to be fed with your word. We thank you for our country, for our nation. Thank you for our government, for our leaders, for our employers, Lord God. We thank you for all those in authority over us, oh God. We pray that your hand will be upon this beautiful nation. We pray, Lord God, for a mighty move of the Spirit of God in this nation and in this land. We pray that healing will come to our land. We pray for your people, O oh Lord, as they leave this place. 
as they go to their workplaces, as they go, Lord God, to their places of learning, their places of business this week. I pray that your grace shall be with them. I pray that your blessing be upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, O oh God. Now be the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore, in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hand. The Lord God Almighty cause you to prosper, cause you to grow, cause you to increase. In Jesus' mighty name, God's people said, Amen. <laughs>